So last lecture, we learned about how astronomical processes actually help us uh, determine and define how we experience climate conditions down here on Earth. Now for indigenous peoples, seasons are not strictly defined by say temperature, but by a very specific uh, series of events happening in the natural world. Now, just as variables such as temperature and hours uh, of daylight act as seasonal markers for, you know, us and, and most people, Indigenous peoples have their very own seasonal markers um, and on the land, but also up in the sky. In this lecture, we'll be looking at one specific Aboriginal nation, the Darwal people. We're going to track uh, the seasons as they do, and let's find out what their country tells, the, tells them about the weather. Yeah, so we want to discuss some of this Darawal knowledge um, that, um, that they know. And so the Darawal people are from the Sydney region um, and that sort of area there in New South Wales. And they are believed to be one of the first nations that did experience contact with with the, the convicts and, and the first fleet and those um, uh, those people when, when they arrived on our shores. Um, and so learning from them, then we can show that there might actually be more than four seasons, um, depending on where you are uh, and what you actually experience on Earth. And so the first example that we want to look at from the Darawal people um, occurs when they hear the mating call of the quoll, which they call the Maraigang. Um, and so they know that um, when they hear this call, um, they also see that the, um, the lily pillies will ripen uh, and eventually begin to fall off the tree. Um, and so that's when they know that they, um, they have that seasonal marker. And they actually call this seasonal marker Maraigang after the call itself. So next up, the Daharwal people know that the season is changing from wetter to cooler periods uh, and this is a time they called Borrigan. Uh, now this is when they observe the male Borrigan or Echidna, this little spiky creature here, uh, forming lines, uh, lines as they follow the female Echidnas through the woodlands in an effort to wear her down actually <laughs> in order to mate with her. It is also the time when the Boroga forest red gum tree starts to produce flowers. And this indicates that it's the time to collect the nectar from that tree um, and from different plants as well for the ceremonies taking place during the next season. And then we move into the time of the year where we get that cold and windy period. Um, and this is when the lyre birds would begin to call out through the forest as they build their mounds and attempt to attract their mates. Um, and it's also the time of year where the wattle tree begins to blossom. Um, and that signifies that the fish are in the rivers and that it's a good time to actually go out and hunt those fish. And then as this season comes to an end, the wattle flower uh, further signals the beginning of the gentle spring rains. Mm. So the next season is of course, the start of warmer periods. And this is seen when the flying foxes are observed to be gathering. Now they come from the north uh, from, and from inland as well, uh, over towards Daharwal country. And they can be seen flying all through Sydney during this season, uh, just after sunset to so keep an eye out. Now this time is also important for the Darawal as it is time to conduct important ceremony. Now this is further signaled by the appearance of the beautiful Waratah flower. So the following season uh, is the warm and wet season and that begins when the eels start to make their way down the creeks and the rivers towards the ocean. So this tells the Darawal people that it's time for the blooming of the, the mile tree, uh, another species of the wattle, um, which further signals the appearance of fish in the bays and estuaries. So finally, we have returned to the start of the year where things start to get a bit more wet, but still quite warm. 
Now this is signaled by the behavior of the male kangaroos, which start acting quite aggressive. Again, mating season. Um, this also indicates that it is forbidden during this time to eat meat during the period uh, due to obvious reasons, increased risk of food poisoning during that time, um, you know, with the wet and really warm weather. So the blooming of the acacia tree, another wattle tree, also tells us about fire seasons. It's starting. Letting the Darwell people know that fires must not be lit at this time. It's far too dangerous. Uh, unless, of course, they are away from bushland. Um, you know, we have relatively calm conditions, um, but generally it's, um, it's a no fire time. Uh, and then, of course, there are violent storms and heavy rain coming. So it's also recommended during this time to not swim in the creeks and rivers. So to summarise then, we can see that the Darawal people, they have six seasons. So they have the uh, warm and wet season, which they call Paradao. Uh, they have Buran, the hot and dry season. They have uh, Maragang, the wet, cooler season. Uh, Burugan, which is the cold, short days of winter in that sort of time. Uh, Wirtjirupin, uh, the cold and windy season. And Ngungungai, the cooler, starting to get warmer season of the year. And so importantly, what these Darawal seasons actually show us uh, is beautifully what is happening um, in the sky and how it affects what's happening here with the animals and the plants and the people and how all of this knowledge is interconnected.